The College of Complexes will now come to order. The College of Complexes will now come to order. He's not The meeting of the College of Complexes is now in session. Good evening and welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is Tim. I will be moderating along with uh, Andy Anderson if he comes here later on. Can I moderate? Can I moderate this evening? I've done it once in a while. I have experience. I'm a veteran. Let's take a vote. Let's take a vote. There's, there's, only, uh, there's, only, two, there's only two rules we have here. One is on one pool at a time, and the second is no personal attacks. What? Tonight, our speaker is Ted Aranda. He's going to talk about the moonlighting hoax, the mother of all lies. No boys and girls, we did not go to the moon. It's true, the moon landing was a gargantuan hoax. But how, could this, how, but how could this possibly be? Because the USA is an empire exception. Hey, Jared, Chuck, would you quit screwing around with the microphone? You sound like you're in an echo. I'm sorry, I'm in an echo. Then turn, turn the echo. Turn the echo. Turn the echo. Let's take a vote. Yeah, let's hold on. We can't let's hear. Turn the echo key, Charlie, all the way off. Yeah. Yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. Well, there's an echo. Yeah, we can't hear you. I paid three bucks. I want to hear it. You want to say testing? I tested it earlier and had the echo key down. Now, are we ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. To, re to, to um, reintroduce Ted, the college consists of three following format. One, we have a brief announcements period. Our speaker will then speak. Then we will have a question period, which should be questions only. And then we will have an infamous rebuttal period. Anybody who wants to get up to start an announcement, I'd like to arise now and be ready so we can get Ted on stage right away. To um, get uh, the formal introduction of Ted again, it's the moon landing hoax, the mother of all lies. No, boys and girls, we did not go to the moon. It's true. The moon landing was a gargantuan hoax. But how could this possibly be? Because the USA is an empire of deception, a tyranny of lies, and an out and out criminal regime. Not to not the glorious discovery it professes to be. In this presentation, investigator Tenoranda lays out the scientific evidence and proves beyond a doubt that with the Apollo program, the U.S. government perpetrated the most elaborate and outrageous fraud in the history of the world. Let's uh, welcome Ted Aranda up to the uh, lectern to get started on his presentation. Let's give a round of applause for Ted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Is that mic working? It is. I'll get the volume up a little more. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, as Tim said, today I'm going to be talking about the Apollo Moon Program, which, as um, all of you, I'm sure, know, uh, went, in, uh, went on in the late 1960s and then into the early uh, 1970s, the first couple of years of the 1970s. So, if you notice what's on the screen, it's uh, a, a quote from Vol uh, partly from Voltaire, a famous quote uh, that says, uh, Those who can make you believe absurdities. Um, can make you commit atrocities. That's Voltaire's quote. Okay. What you see is a, a takeoff on that, uh, because what Voltaire said is certainly true, but even under the most horrendous regimes, not everyone in a population is literally going to be committing atrocities. There's always a gradation, uh, from the actual dictators to their immediate henchmen, to mere foot soldiers and bureaucrats, and finally down to a whole lot of innocent people uh, just trying to keep alive and make it through the day. However, when your rulers create an entire false reality for you and perpetually keep you fooled about what they're doing, and this can happen not just in overt dictatorships but also under ostensibly liberal governments, then politically speaking, an entire people can be kept in an ignorant, zombified state of mind, enslaved without their even knowing it. And this can go on indefinitely. And in fact, sad to say, this is pretty much where we are in the USA today. Now, I have uh, so much material, um, I've gathered so much material on the moon landing, folks, that it's going to take uh, two presentations to cover it all, even barely adequately. So today 
did the first part, and in a couple of months, I'll go through the uh, second part. Today, I'm going to concentrate on the most simple and basic evidence of fakery. Next time, I'll get into some of the individual Apollo missions, and there were six, of, six actual landings, or alleged landings, and also the program as a whole. And then we'll see more elaborate evidence um, and broader problems revealing the fakery. Now, in uh, my many presentations, you all uh, will have noticed probably that I don't talk that much about myself, my critical credentials, because what I talk about usually is uh, pretty basic stuff that you can, anybody can research. It just takes open-mindedness and uh, a willingness to be uh, scientific-minded. <clears throat> but today, uh, I have a special advantage with this particular topic because I'm uh, a very experienced amateur astronomer. And as you see on the screen, I wrote a book on the subject. Um, and the specific uh, topic uh, is deep sky objects, which are objects be beyond the solar system, the solar system, the planets, the sun and the moon, which you can observe you know, with a telescope. Um, so that's, we're talking about galaxies and uh, star clusters and nebulae. And I observed uh, the, all the major objects uh, that are visible from the northern sky. Uh, I went down to um, Arizona and New Mexico and Nevada with my telescope. And, uh, and then I wrote uh, this uh, catalog with my observations. And to do this a project, I designed and built a very special telescope, <coughs> which is a binocular telescope. Um, because I determined that you can see a lot better with, with two eyes. And, but of course, usually people just have either small binoculars or, or a big monocular telescope, you know, just one. So I combined the two, and that gives you an idea of the size. And um, so you, you have, with, with, this binocular, with this telescope, you have one big telescope for each eye. And that just gives you an idea of the, the degree to which I'll go to find out the truth, whether in astronomy or politics. And there's a lot of fudging in astronomy as well, believe it or not. So the moon hoax is not a close call. This is not a quote unquote mystery. It's like a book that all you have to do is open the cover and start reading, and then it all falls out. Bart Chabrell, one of the uh, main early investigators, said, I'm absolutely convinced. I spent my life on it that we didn't go to the moon. I know for a fact that we didn't. Another says, uh, Dennis, Cimino, Dennis Cimino says, it's absolutely certain, not probable, but certain. I'm not 99.9% .9 certain, I'm 100% certain. All of the evidence proves we never went. It was a very elaborate hoax, and I concur with that opinion completely. So let's start looking at uh, some of the evidence. This is, uh, of course, a very famous photograph, probably the most iconic photograph of, of the entire Apollo program, one of the most iconic photographs of the 20th century. And in that one photograph, and they took thousands of photographs, okay? In that, this one photograph, you can see the fakery, a very major fakery in three different ways, at least. Okay, so first of all, notice where the horizon is on this, in this picture. It goes through this, this astronaut's head. And this is supposed to be Buzz Aldrin, and it's supposed to be Neil Armstrong that was taking his photograph. And in, in his visor, okay, right there in his visor, reflective visor, uh, you'll see that Neil Armstrong is standing there <clears throat> with the camera at his chest, okay? And that's how the uh, astronauts always held the camera, um, because that left their hands free. And it would have been useless to have a camera to put it at their eye, because the visor was in the way, for one thing. Um, so. They kept it up, up, up at, their, at their chest level up all the time. Another thing was the, the cameras had no viewfinder. They were designed to be held, like he's holding it right here, at that handle, there's a handle there. And so, okay, so the cameras were at their chest level. Now look at where the horizon is on, in this photograph. Actually, this is a film, but anyway, in this still of this, of this film. It's at uh, his chest level, where the camera is, okay? In this uh, other, in, in a, a different mission, the horizon is at his chest level. And in fact, that's where the uh, horizon has to be. If, you're, if two people are standing relatively close to each other, just they were always like 10 feet apart in these photographs I'm showing, I'm showing you, 
and one takes a picture of another, and the camera's at the chest level, you, the, the horizon and, and the, the ground is reasonably level, and the two guys are re about the same height, the camera has to be, uh, uh, the horizon has to be at chest level, all right? It's a very simple the geometric problem. And if you look in, in his visor, this camera, this uh, astronaut's visor, <clears throat> you, you see the cameraman, uh, the other astronaut, with a camera on the, at his chest and re relatively uh, reasonably uh, level ground. This is me, obviously. <laughs> and uh, hold on a second, please. <clears throat> I took that picture uh, on, with a camera on a tripod, this little camera right here, and I put, set that camera at chest level, okay, right there, there's the camera, and the horizon comes out at chest level, all right? <clears throat> I took this photograph where the horizon is at my head, and to do that I had to raise the camera by over a foot, put it on the stand here, in this uh, milk crate, and pull in the, 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 uh, the legs. I had to get it considerably higher, okay? <clears throat> like that. So this photograph was not, simply not taken by Neil Armstrong with a camera at chest level. Um, here's another photograph where the same problem occurs, all right? That camera, uh, here's the astronaut, in, in the second astronaut in the visor, and he's holding the camera at chest level, but so, so the horizon should be at chest level. So they have it right sometimes, they have it wrong sometimes. Why is that? Because they weren't on the moon, they were faking it, they were in a studio, and sometimes the photographer, because the photographer, uh, uh, probably a professional photographer, took the, all of these photographs, and sometimes he put the camera in the, in the wrong place. He naturally, uh, assuming it's him, uh, he or she naturally placed it, you know, put the camera at his, at his head, which is where you normally take photographs. So sometimes they got it right, sometimes they got it wrong. That's what happens when you fake things, especially uh, in a project like Apollo, which took, you know, years, many missions. You, you don't get everything right when you're faking things. Reality is reality. There are no, there are no, there's nothing wrong in reality. There are no, uh, I mean, you know, you know in, a, in a manner of speaking. <clears throat> Another way you know that this was, so that's major, right? Another way you know that this is fake, and this one is dead certain, okay? Look at um, where the light is here, okay? The, the light is concentrated, right? Obviously. Right around the astronaut, especially right here. Um, in the background, um, and in the, even in the foreground, it's much darker, considerably. Okay, there's no two ways about it. This is not even evenly lit. Then in fact, in photography, you call this a fall-off area, and that's when you light, when you use a spotlight either uh, you know, a very zoomed in spotlight or even a more diffuse spotlight. Uh, so in later uh, Apollo missions, they, they got it right. Okay? In, uh, on the Earth or on the Moon, the ground in a large open field is going to be completely evenly lit with, with you know, even terrain. You know, not if you have grass and then um, dark asphalt. But if, you know, if, you have, if it's all the same material, and there are no obstructions, there are no clouds. The, the ground is going to be evenly lit. So they, they did it right, they faked it right in other uh, later subsequent um, uh, missions. Okay, like that. That's how the uh, light should be. <clears throat> but here, in, in this one, uh, in, in a, you know, the, uh, Apollo 11, and also uh, to a large degree uh, Apollo 12, they got it wrong. Okay, probably because they were just starting out. There's no concentration of light anywhere around me, okay? And you'll get the same result, anybody will get the same result in an open field, on the Earth or on the Moon. This is my telescope in the desert, and there's no concentration of light. Um, there's no unevenness in, in, in the light on the ground. So here are a couple more pictures uh, where you see this concentration in Apollo 11. Was, this was a very major mistake that, that they made. Obvious spotlight, okay? More or less like that, not quite as extreme, but they were using an artificial light. It was not the sun, okay? And they claimed, uh, they admitted, uh, that they, they never took any artificial light to the moon. First of all, it would be too heavy, and why would you need it? You have the sun, okay? The sun was the only major source of light um, in all the Apollo programs, so they claimed. So you don't have spotlight, and you cannot have uh, an, an uneven field, 
uh, an evenly lit field. This is a soccer field, okay, in the sunshine, it's evenly lit. At night, they put up, they uh, turn on the, uh, the floodlights, and you see the darkness around the field, and even inside the field to some degree, okay? Evenly lit field in the sun, and obvious fall off around the field. They don't want, they're not gonna light up the entire neighborhood, they're just lighting up the one field. That's what happens when you use artificial light. They used artificial light on, uh, quote unquote, on the moon, because it wasn't on the moon. It was in a studio um, or a moon set. A third way that um, you can tell right away that this is fake, is um, look how brightly uh, lit the astronaut is on, on the shadow side. Look how dark this, the shadow is here. So it's a, a dim light um, environment, um, low light environment, but yet he's uh, uh, brightly lit with a, a very bright source of light um, to his uh, left, upper left, left of the, the shoulder. Either whether it's, whether it's a bright, uh, whether it's the sun or, or a spotlight, uh, that's where the light is coming from. So this should be dark. <clears throat> on the shadow side, he should be very dark, and if he was on the moon, he would be very, very dark uh, on the shadow side because the moon has no atmosphere and the, sh and the contrast is extreme, which I'll, I'll show you in a second. Okay, he's um, but too well lit up. If this was in focus, you would, and close the zoom in, you would be able to read whatever's written here. So, the difference between the Earth and the moon is extreme in, in terms of the lighting environment, okay? <clears throat> the moon has no atmosphere. This is the terminator of the moon, the division between uh, day and night. And when you look in a telescope or photographs or whatever, um, the, you can see right down into the, uh, onto the surface with uh, a great detail because of the contrast, because of, or rather because of the, um, the detail is brought out in the, by the shadows, okay, like so. And you see this in a, in a good telescope even more sharply than that. It's, it's really amazing. Has anybody looked in a, in a good sharp telescope at the moon? It's, it's really sharp, okay? Razor sharp. <clears throat> this is the Earth with its own terminator. Every planet has it uh, revolving around. The sun has a terminator opening the sun. Okay, um, it's night, day. And on Earth, when you look down from uh, uh, an orbiting uh, craft, for instance, you don't see any detail uh, on the surface. These are clouds. Okay, but that's about all you see it's caught in, at dusk or dawn. You don't see any sharp detail on the surface because the uh, atmosphere is very thick, okay? Um, and so you only see the broadest, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, detail, not, not sharp detail, little detail. Very vague, the transition is very vague, okay? On the moon, you have no atmosphere to speak of, okay? It arguably, there's a very, very, very tenuous atmosphere, but for all practical purposes, there, there's no atmosphere. So you can see uh, right onto the surface, and you see uh, nothing in the shadows, okay? So we don't have to speculate about what shadow regions would look like on, on the moon. We can see it right here. Um, you don't see anything in craters. You don't see anything on mountainsides, okay? That crater is black inside, right? Uh, uh, nice, uh, brightly lit uh, sunlight, sun side of a mountain. Um, sh the black shadow, nicely lit um, in the sun here, black crater rim there. Same thing here, a mountainside, completely black. Okay. On Earth, uh, because of the, the uh, atmosphere which diffuses the light, okay, um, so the light uh, that, that, that any surface receives is not just direct sunlight, it's diffused light uh, that bouncing off the molecules in the atmosphere. You see into shadows. Here's a, a, a peak on Earth. You see the shadow, the, the details in the shadow. Uh, same here, all right? And uh, a, a particularly interesting case is Meteor Crater in Arizona, which is the largest, uh, most Earth-like, it's not the very largest, but uh, it's, it's the crater that is very large, that looks most like um, what a crater on the moon looks like because it's very pristine in the desert. You see right into it, the shadows, okay? And for the same reason that you can see into a crater on Earth, the shadow side, you see uh, the, the sh uh, shadow side of a person without much problem, without much trouble. That's why you see me there instead of being completely black. The correct definition of daylight is sun illuminated atmosphere. On the moon, there is no such sun illuminated atmosphere. That's David Percy who said that. 
And there is, uh, in an extreme case though, whether on the sun or, uh, excuse me, whether on the earth or on the moon, of uh, a silhouette situation where you're photographing directly into the sunlight. There you're going to have dark shadows, okay? And as a matter of fact, this is a, a very well-known phenomenon, and uh, it, it even has a name in photography, contrajour. And it's a nice effect sometimes that, that uh, sometimes the photographer wants, right? Like that. Now, what if you wanted to uh, show the detail in the shadow here? Well, could you do it, and what would you have to do? You could do it, and you would have to overexpose that photograph. Okay? Way overexposed. So in this case, this, this guy did an experiment. Uh, he wasn't proving the point I'm making right now, but at any rate, this is useful. This is a correctly exposed photograph. If you want to see detail in the shadow, and even into the house, or, or let's say in that tree, if you want to see a detail, you have to way overexpose the photograph. Okay? Like this. Way overexposed. But you can, uh, you can, there's a fix, okay? And that, and it takes secondary light. Remember, they're on the moon, uh, excuse me, yeah, they're, they're supposed to be on the moon, they only have the sun, period, okay? But uh, uh, if you want to sh uh, 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 show detail in shadows, you can do that with uh, a fill flash, a secondary source of light, like a flash on your camera. Now you're in what would normally be a slow situation, but you can uh, show the detail. Nice, you know, nicely lit. That requires backlight, a second source of light, okay? Not just the sun. Um, here, this guy's taking a picture into the sun. What's the result? A fully lit subject. So what does he do? He uses his flash. See that? See right there on the woman, the, the flash, okay? Voila, voila, I should say. And nicely lit. Here is uh, uh, supposedly the, the, the lunar module on the moon. in what is clearly a silhouette situation. Even on Earth, you wouldn't get uh, lighting this bright, much less on the moon where the contrast is so severe. Okay, on the moon, uh, you know, lit areas are, very, are quite bright, dark areas are, are black, pretty much, okay? <clears throat> so here is uh, Buzz Aldrin coming down from the lunar, lunar module, and Neil Armstrong is taking his photograph and uh, taking pictures. All right, you see even into the lunar module, into the cabin, all right? That should be black. That's, this is totally uh, fake. Uh, look how nice and bright he is. I mean, he is bright, all right? While wow, the shadow is dark, so it's, it, it's, it's a, a, a low light uh, situation. They're in a the studio, um, probably, uh, or, or possibly outdoors at night, but it's a low light situation. The only way you can get that kind of brightness there is with a secondary source of light. And some uh, investigators have noticed um, his heel, okay? See that bright spot on his heel? That's a hot spot. That's known in photography as a hot spot. That means there's a, a, a definite uh, source of light flashing uh, uh, um, uh, on, on that boot, apart from the sun. A, and this isn't, you know, this, this, you see this oftentimes. There are many instances like this in, in the many photographs that they took on the moon. Um, you have um, an extreme sort of situation, and the lunar module is bright like a Christmas tree, and you even have a hot spot here on this canister, besides this jump here, uh, which is also lit. Here's another instance of, that should be silhouette, dark, <clears throat> and here's one well known to, uh, very well known to investigators. Okay, the, the, the sun is coming in from low on the horizon, right behind the guy, and he's really nicely lit, whereas he should be like that. Somebody simulated what he would look like if he were really on the moon. Okay, and so that to get that effect, you need throw in flash. And here's a simulation of what you would need to do to light up that lunar module. Now notice that the shadow, okay, down here on on the ground is not uh, hardly hardly affected. Okay, that's because the fill light is directional. It's coming you know horizontally, right? And that. Uh, so look at look at this photograph here again, and notice something funny uh, up here. This you have a darker shadow on, on his helmet, and on top of his backpack, and also to some degree on the shoulder. Why is that? If this was if, if the sun uh, was the only source of illumination, uh, all of this would be dark, 
all of the shadow side would be dark, and it would be equally dark. Okay, uh, you would not have uh, shadow dark here and light here, but you do because you have to, you, fill in light is being used in the studio, and so uh, the light is horizontal and it lights up vertical surfaces, not horizontal surfaces. Now, an extreme, um, uh, a good example of, of, of the necessity of backlight is this case that I ran into, just by luck. This is the, uh, the crater. Uh, Tycho on the moon, and this guy took an, a well-exposed photograph of this crater, and then he overexposed it intentionally. This is the first time and only time I've ever seen detail in a crater, in the dark, in, in the shadow, okay? And he was able to do that, and he did it intentionally, but uh, he did it uh, by uh, overexposing the photograph, number one, and number two, uh, it took a certain set of, a uh, special set of circumstances. Tycho has a nice um, crater rim, okay? And Tycho is 53 miles wide, this crater, uh, which is about almost the distance between here and Kankakee. So that was a huge amount of light bouncing off this nicely formed rim, all right? Should have zoomed it in. And lighting up, to some degree, the shadow on the inside. Okay, that was, that's the normal exposure. Here's the, here's the nicely formed, uh, almost ver vertical rim, and then you get, get a nice and backlight, reflected light, and you get it lit. Okay, notice these uh, craters over here, and over here, okay. The uh, craters without a nice rim, because they're older and degraded, okay, they don't have a whole lot of light in, they don't have any light inside. These uh, craters here, and all of these craters are like many miles wide, like 10 miles wide, Okay, they have nice rooms. They're newer, they're, they're uh, younger craters. So they get lit up a little bit inside. Okay, after, as, and, and, and with the overexposure. So the point here is that you need backlight to uh, show uh, uh, detail in craters on the moon, period. Okay, there was uh, not supposed to be any backlight in, on, 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 with uh, the Apollo astronauts. They're on a flat surface. Uh, the, the sun is shining from, from above, all right, and uh, there's nothing supposed to be reflecting into uh, onto this uh, 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 um, astronaut lighting them up. They were in the studio. Now you might um, <clears throat> say um, or ask, don't these NASA scientists know what things should look like on the moon? And the answer is uh, they probably do. Not necessarily, but they probably do. But their goal is not reality. All right? The Apollo program was a big propaganda campaign. It was a show. It was not primarily about reality. They wanted to make it look as accurate as possible, but not. But the, the main goal was propaganda. Okay, not accuracy. And um, you, you see this oftentimes in science fiction shows and movies. You know, if you if you if you know. You know, a little bit of science. You often see uh, what cannot be, but they're not. They're not uh, primarily. They're not. They're, um, it's science fiction. They're, show, they're they're producing a show, not necessarily reality. Okay, so <clears throat> they were on the moon set. Let's look at the possibilities. Okay, now this is a photograph of the lunar surface, right? Wrong. When I looked at when I saw that, and somebody's and. One of my sources said, that's, the, that's, that's on Earth. This is on Earth. I said, no, come on, and look at that. It looks pretty very realistic. This is a field on Earth. It's this field right here. The same field, a different photograph. <clears throat> and you can uh, trace, you can sh see the, the pattern of the craters. It's the same photograph. Take my word for it, or you can look at it carefully if you want. Um, and here's here are tire tracks down here. This is a field in Arizona, in the desert. It's uh, Cinder Lake's Flagstaff, Arizona, or near Flagstaff, Arizona. And this is Crater Field 1. There are two crater fields, 1 and 2. All right? This is, uh, what did I say? Okay, this is number 2, this is number 1. At any rate, the two little separate fields close together. Um, I don't want to waste time just uh, telling you what this is, but uh, that's something that they constructed in there. <clears throat> and here's uh, field number 1 with the forest around it. Okay, they made these fields with craters so that the astronauts could train in, in realistic condition, right? Which makes some sense, maybe a lot of sense. 
it also makes a lot of sense to do this um, if you're going to touch the whole thing and fill it at these fields, at these moon sets. So there's Cinder Lakes, uh, northeast of Flagstaff, Arizona, 12 miles northeast. Field number one, field number two. <clears throat> and um, there's, there it is in the mountains. And um, it's not a, it's, it's a basalt field, uh, an old volcanic uh, eruption. There was a volcanic eruption in ancient times and left all this basalt. Um, but it's not naturally that clean. What they did, and by the way, that's the material there, basalt, they cleaned it up. They cleaned up that field. Because obviously, if you're going to film uh, astronauts running around on the moon, you can't have the bushes you know, um, in there, too. <clears throat> so they cleaned it up, leveled it out, made it nice and neat, and then blasted craters. They literally blasted the craters in, uh, on this, on, in this field. And there were others, too. I'm just showing you one of, of, of the main one, or the most photogenic one. And these are the craters from the air. Very realistic. And so the astronauts uh, train there. Those are actual astronauts in their civilian clothes. That gives you, uh, this gives you a, a, a feel for the, the kind of stage that they have. They had a, a nice, large stage to play with. <coughs> um, they had other facilities. This is in Lang, uh, excuse me, in Virginia. It's actually in Ham uh, Hampton, Virginia. This is uh, the Langley Research Center in Hampton, um, Virginia. And um, it's so large that you need a map, okay, to get around uh, over 200 buildings. It's like a, a small university, or maybe even a major university. Notice this structure over here, okay? That's this right here. <clears throat> it's called a gantry. And look, how, look at the size of the cars down there. Okay, it's huge. And that's used uh, as a crane to lower the lunar module onto the ground, um, like that, or astronauts as well, um, to a, a simulated lunar surface. Now, this isn't a very good simulation, but obviously they could, they could make one look just like the moon. And, they, and at Langley, they also had huge moon globes, like that one and our wall charts that they illustrated to reproduce the moon, okay, like this, very in great detail. And they had a track, too, in, in this case. And notice this globe here, too. So they could, and this is the same, uh, um, same thing. They, ju you, they just don't have you know, the charts on there, the maps on there right now. So they could have a, a cart with a camera coming in on these um, rails um, simulating orbit or approaching or leaving uh, the moon. And this um, picture in a, in a book uh, describes shows what, what they could do. Okay, so, um, and this is why the, some, so many of the photographs, alleged photographs from the spaceships, are so funky and, and kind of, you know, in poor quality because they weren't actually photographed the moon. They were right here. If they had been over the moon, they would be right over the moon, just a few miles above the surface, right? Everything should be perfectly sharp. But it's not because they're only photographing funky uh, models, number one. Number two, they wouldn't want it to look very sharp. So because, of, you know, then you could see the bakery. So everything is, is fudgy. <clears throat> That's what they did. Uh, another possibility is uh, they were, they were facilities around Mercury, Nevada, this little town um, near these air, air, uh, um, uh, military installations in Nevada test site, Area 51. Part of this is restricted area, okay? Um, this is Las Vegas down here. This is Tonopa, or Tonopa, uh, Nevada up there. And I mention this because I actually went through that town on my way to an observing site right around here in uh, Nevada. That was one of my observing sites. Like I said, this is a uh, restricted area, high, 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 extremely high security. Why? And uh, Bill Casing in, in his book um, shows some of the uh, facilities there. Why? Why? I'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. All right, you can ask later. Um, now, my point here, though, is that these, uh, the United States government did and has, to this day, vast resources. Okay practically unlimited budgets, black budgets, that we don't even know uh, that they have, much less how much is in those budgets. And they have the whole country to play with. 
including the whole, you know, practically the whole of the Southwest. Uh, most of Nevada is, is, is federal land. Don't ever underestimate what the government, the U.S. government can do if it, it, want, if it wants to. And that's how they, uh, that's, that's why they were able to do this, the human hoax, because they had the resources. It was all in, on Earth. <clears throat> and so let's continue with the evidence. I showed you some basic evidence um, at the beginning. <clears throat> These are photographs that I'm going to show you now, all from uh, the Apollo um, missions. And notice something very strange. This would be strange on Earth, okay, or anywhere, uh, if it was real. If, it, if, this was a supposed to, if this was a real scene on a real planet, it would be strange because uh, you see that line there? There is in practically all the Apollo photographs where there's a background instead of just a black sky, where they show like a mountain or whatever, there's this sharp separation line where you have a detailed foreground and a vague, fake looking uh, background, or fake looking mountains like paper mache or whatever, okay? Look, look at the difference between the detail here and the washed out mountains and, and how sharp the transition is. That, you see that in uh, practically all the photographs, okay? Um, here is that line again. Sometimes it's a little subtle, but it's always there. Um, here again, okay, detail, no detail. Here it's, it's, a, it's more subtle. This photograph gives you an idea of, of the size of the fields that they can play with. Okay, here's the, uh, uh, a, an astronaut in the moon rover, and here's the uh, line, all right. Sometimes it's a little subtle, but you always find it. <clears throat> and uh, some people call this the Kubrick horizontal yeah. because Stanley Kubrick uh, may have been involved in faking the whole thing, oh uh, at least uh, uh, lending his movie, movie filmmaking expertise. Not that he was behind the whole thing. Some people maybe go overboard. Yeah. That's not that's not the case. But anyway, so it's very very obvious and very extreme, and it's in practically all the photographs. Now this is the Earth, of course. And when we take photographs of landscapes here, do you see any sharp separation no. line between foreground and background? No. It's the natural terrain. <clears throat> of course not. <clears throat> no separation line here, or hikers down here. Okay, to give you the size of, of what we're looking at. No separation, and also detail in the background. Just because something's, a, you know, a miles in the distance with a, with a good camera, and they, all, they had good cameras, those Hasselblad cameras were perfectly fine, why would there be no detail in, in, in the background mountains? Okay. You, so on, Earth, on most Earth photographs, you're going to see a continuous scene, all right, no dichotomy, and detail from uh, beginning to end. Not necessarily, of course, the ex exact amount, same amount of detail, but detail nonetheless. There are uh, uh, exceptions to some degree. Like this is a partial exception. So there's a line here, right? But even in this case, if you follow to the left here, they're on a ridge. Yeah. And it goes, continues over here, as you see here in this enlargement. Okay. Even in that case, the line is not all the way across. <clears throat> now, these are, this is a panorama I took in my, in, at my desert site in Nevada. And there's no separation line, right? Um, Maybe starting over there. When you get over here, okay, there, there it is. Okay, and why is that? Because it's an exceptional case. Right. It can happen, but it's an exceptional case where you're on a rise and then a dip in the distance. All right, that is not how it's going to be all the time. In fact, that's not going to be that's, that's going to be a, a, a small minority of the time. Uh, the, the vast majority of the time, uh, normally, you're going to have a continuous seen into the distance with detail and no separation. So uh, how, did, how did they film this, this, this sort of thing? And how did they do this bakery? One um, possibility, very likely possibility, is the use of front screen projection, where you have, and, and this is a filmmaking technique, you have a stage, and here are the actors, and then everything in the background is, uh, is imaginary. Okay, it's just a, something on a screen. <clears throat> and uh, this is from Stanley Kubrick's um, 2001 A Space Odyssey. This is the technique that he used, okay? So you have stage, and then uh, in the background, you have the screen projected um, background. 
this is the reality. This is this is what it really is. Uh, actors on the on the on the stage, and then the the, huge, the big screen in the back. <clears throat> and very quickly, the way you do this is you use a one-way mirror, okay, uh, where you you uh, um, project something. This is a projector. Uh, onto the mirror and then onto a special, uh, highly reflective screen. All right, uh, and at the same time you you film. You can there's your camera. You film through the regular glass side of this uh, one-way mirror, and then the result is this: uh, the actual subject against a an imaginary um, screen projected background. Okay, another piece of evidence of of, of, of fakery. <clears throat> There's something very strange in this photograph. Has, has anybody ever heard, um, well, it's too early to tell, but I, I, I'll give it away. Has anybody heard, ever heard of the Sea Rock in, yeah. in, the, in the Apollo programs? Okay, there's, there's something very, very strange in this, in this um, uh, photograph, and that's this C right here, okay? <clears throat> that C on that rock. Oh, the letter C. The letter C. I'm, I'm sorry if I didn't make that clear. Yeah. Um, the letter C. Um, very uh, perfectly formed. All right. Now there is a possibility of a C being on a, on a, on a moon rock or some rock on some planet, uninhabited planet, because it's a it's a fairly simple letter, and it, 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 there could be a, an extreme coincidence where the for, you know there's a formation of a C, right? Now what would be the probability of another C being right below it? See that see there? On the ground, on the, on the, in the soil. What is the probability of that? Those two being at zero. Zero. Okay. Not technically zero, point zero 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 to the a million, you know, a billion uh, 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 digits, but it's pretty much zero. That's a prop. And uh, one filmmaker says the use of the letter C on film props is well known by Hollywood people and is used to show the center of the scene. Uh, uh, center of the scene. Yeah. Now I couldn't corroborate that, so I'm not I, I'm not going to vouch for that specifically. <clears throat> but certainly they were using prop rocks um, in the Apollo program, all over the place. Okay, you can buy these things. I don't know what they're made of. They're, not, they're certainly not regular rocks. And this one here, for instance, is, is about the size of that sea rock that we saw, and you put them wherever you need them. Now, interestingly. <clears throat> The sea was only visible for a while because when they found that out that you know this gave it away, they erased the Z. Uh, excuse me, C. They uh, photo, uh, they call it, uh, brushed it out. What's the term? Photoshop. Yeah. Photoshop. Airbrush. Airbrush. Right. Okay. Except that they, they they neglected to take out the sea huh, in the soil. Okay. So if that was explicable, why wouldn't they have just left it? More evidence. Here is a typically ridiculously fake scene of a you know, paper ship mache mountain, nice, neat uh, surface, you know. I'll, I'll get in, next time I'll get into why this, uh, this is so unrealistic, the terrain, the terrain that we're looking at. But here I just want to point out, uh, you know, they used to have the, the rover tracks, the lunar rover, run, driving around like they were, you know, on the interstate here, here in, 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 on, the, on Earth. And uh, leaving tracks all over the place, okay, uh, along with footprints, the astronaut footprints, everywhere it went. There it goes, leaving tracks, okay, because they're always in dusty, uh, on, the, on a dusty surface. In this photograph, there are no tracks. There are no tracks there, there are no tracks there, there are no tracks anywhere. There are footprints, but no tracks. How could that be? And uh, when you zoom in, same thing. There's a nice footprint, no tracks. How can you get that rover there without making tracks? There's another, even more, uh, well, uh, a better case, actually. At least you see it better. Um, no tracks, uh, tire tracks, uh, in front of or behind this tire. None, all right? Now, how can that be with a, a rover on the moon? Built it around that. You could say, Possibly that the astronauts, uh, you know, uh, um, kicked up dirt to hide the tracks or to in, in, inadvertently hide the tracks. But you would see uh, evidence of that with a lot of foot, you know, boot prints uh, where they kicked the dirt. You could also uh, say possibly that the astronauts lifted the rover and, 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 and set it down. And, and that's a real possibility. It's a real possibility because on the moon, the gravity is only one sixth of Earth. And this rover uh, only weighs a few hundred pounds, not thousands of pounds. So they could. 
have lifted it up and set it down, with, and, and, then, and then you would get a scene without the tracks, right? But number one, they never reported doing any such thing. They wouldn't have done any such thing. The rover never broke down. That's just a mere possibility. The likelihood, the, 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 the overwhelming likelihood, is that they set that rover down, probably from a crane, like I showed you, on a simulated moon, uh, moon surface in, in, in a stage set, in a moon set. Okay, and then after setting it down, they started walking around and they took photographs of it. They neglected to drive the rover first. Okay, whereas on the moon, the only way that rover could have gotten there was by driving it. And there would have been tracks. <clears throat> More evidence. Here are two astronauts. This is on film, not, not still photographs, but these are stills uh, <coughs> that I took of the film. And still images. And so there's one, photo, uh, one astronaut, and there's the other one in the distance over there. Okay? And this uh, is being filmed from the lunar rover by an automatically remotely controlled camera. Okay? So you have two astronauts on the surface. There are always uh, two and only two astronauts on the surface. The third one was orbiting in, in a capsule above, in the command uh, module. Okay, there are the two astronauts, and notice this fringe here, I have to explain that, that this color fringe, all right, which you see in, in, in this clip, in these clips here, or in this clip, um, when the camera moved, or some object moved in front of the camera, including shadows, you got some color banding. That's a technical term in photography, it's called color banding. Okay, it's no big deal. But that, sh that explains what we're going to see here. Watch, what, watch this carefully. There's the astronaut just sitting there. You see that? Moving across the screen. I'll run it back, backward. You have two shadows cover the surface uh, uh, where they are, the area that, where they are, and even over that astronaut. And here's the uh, black and white version. Okay. <coughs> Two distinct shadows across the surface of the moon. How do you have shadows uh, like that on the moon? Large shadows like that. It's impossible. There is nothing in the sky on the moon. There are no planes. There are no birds. There is no balloon or garbage or you know, plastic bags floating up there. The one remote, <coughs> as in like to the you know. One over a billion uh, uh, chances uh, are um, the Apollo, the, the uh, command module, the guy in the command module revolving the, uh, uh, orbiting the moon. Okay, that, that would be a possibility, except that that's ruled out because number one, the shadow is, is the shadows are long, whereas the command module is stubby. Uh, secondly, the, it wouldn't have cast a shadow against the, the uh, because it'd be so tiny up there against the large sun. Um, and there were two shadows, not one. So that rules that out. That would be the only, you know, as I said, possibility. So that leaves um, the conclusion that this was on Earth. And in a, in a studio, okay, and there was a bright uh, floodlight or some other stage light, and uh, some objects passed in front of the, of the, of the camera. Oh, excuse me, in front of the lamp. That's what happened there. This was a stage set. There cannot be shadows. Um, you know, moving, especially sh moving shadows, on a flat surface with no buildings, no trees, uh, obviously no trees. <laughs> All right, more evidence. This is a um, <clears throat> film of the space shuttle orbiting Earth, okay? And what you see here is that the movement is continuous, okay? I'm not pressing the button continuously, but believe me, when you look at the film, it's very smooth and continuous, all right? And nothing stays in the scene for any length of time. Um, these, these, are all, these are five second intervals, okay? Everything's gone within a, a, a short period of time. This is a, a supposedly, supposedly a, um, a lunar orbiter orbiting the moon. Now, I have to say, uh, I don't believe this is real because the, 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 the surface is, is kind of fakey, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. Uh, either whether it's, it's 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 real or not, it's a good simulation, at least, of a lunar orbiter orbiting the moon. Notice that crater coming up from the top; it's gone after a few seconds. Okay, nothing stays within the field of view for more for more than a few seconds, and it, and movement is motion is smooth and continuous and unidirectional. Okay, 
This is a, a, a clip from Apollo 10, allegedly. Okay? Well, it, it is a clip from Apollo 10, but it was on Earth. But whether it was on Earth or on the moon, um, nothing stays in the scene. This is Apollo 10 allegedly orbiting the moon. Notice this uh, mountain right here. That mountain right there, in this clip, uh, excuse me, in this, uh, um, now it's, it's here. After a few seconds, 50, 10 seconds actually, oh, excuse me, it's down here. Nothing stayed in the, in the same scene longer than 10 seconds on Apollo 10. All right, remember that. Apollo 10, 10 seconds, maximum. <clears throat> now let's move on to uh, Apollo 11. This is live footage um, of Apollo 11 approaching and, and entering or moon orbit, okay? They're covering this, you know, like hawks, right? And I'm gonna start the clip just to show you a couple things. First of all, why is it such bad quality photography? These are uh, photographs from the lunar orbiters before Apollo, the, the probes, the probe, unmanned probes yeah. that they sent up there. All right? Perfectly nice, sharp photographs. Why would the, the Apollo photographs not be able to, uh, photographers or astronauts not be able to photograph a decent image of the moon, okay? Because they're not photographing the moon. <clears throat> okay, so uh, another thing I want to point out is the area that, that they were in. There above the Schubert crater, this crater right here, and this crater here, back, these two craters, and have main crater up here, just to get you oriented. And they're moving from top to bottom. That's the orbital motion, from top to bottom, um, east to west, okay? Okay, so, and there's how they very distinctive crater. So I'll start the clip again. Same, same crater, different lighting. <clears throat> okay, so there's how they there's Schubert and Bach, and now I'll, I'll go through the, the, the more of the clip. Notice how the, hold on a second, I'm not seeing this too well because it's not tilted very well. Okay, um, notice uh, uh, the two craters down here, okay? They go back up in the wrong direction to Haldane, all right? And they sit there uh, over Haldane for an extended period of time, and then they jump back, and, and you'll notice there's nothing uh, resembling orbital motion, real orbital motion here. It's all chopped, haphazard, okay? So they're back to uh, uh, Schubert and Bach, and then they jump around, and then back to Schubert and Bach. They're not going anywhere, all right? They're sitting over Schubert and Bach uh, for three minutes. Remember Apollo 10, 10 seconds. Here, 180 seconds. They're sitting over those two craters. They're still there, jumping around hovering over those two craters. They're sightseeing, and when you listen to the uh, voice of, of, of the astronaut, mostly um, Michael Collins, he's like sightseeing. Oh, here's the uh, Schubert crater, and here's back. Okay, like they were, um, no sense of adventure, no sense of, 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 of awe, no sense of, uh, of discovery, no. It's, it's all, you know, just a sham. Anyway, so they're jumping around. Finally, they, they get down to these craters over here, okay? After 180 seconds. And you can calculate all this like, as I did, okay? And, and uh, I'll just jump right over to the, the diagram. Um, they, the field of view, those two craters uh, together, the field of view was, it was twice the size, uh, the distance between uh, one edge of, of, of this crater and the other edge of that crater, okay? This, this crater right here to this crater, the end of that crater right there is um, 54 kilometers. Uh, twice that is uh, 120 miles. That's the, the length uh, the, of, of the field of view, okay? That's the width of the field of view, 100, uh, 120 miles, okay? Um, they, by the time they moved 120 miles, they wouldn't have been seeing anything that they were seeing originally. It would have been 120 seconds because the speed is uh, 30, uh, roughly 3,600 miles an hour, which is one mile per second. So they cover 120 miles in 120 seconds. Sorry to get so much into the numbers. Yeah. But they would have been gone after 120 seconds. They were over those two craters 180 seconds, which is an impossibility. They were not, they were going too fast to sit over those craters. They were, 3600 miles an hour is twice the speed of a bullet out of a rifle. They were not in orbit, okay? Watch this. Now they're jumping more, jumping around a little bit more, okay? Over that crater, now watch this. Okay, see this crater down here? Watch that crater. It's going to get up to the middle of the scene. They're still there. 
to, it's going to get to the middle of the field of view right there. Watch the next several seconds, actually two minutes, okay, actually, or a minute and a half. This is every, I'm pushing this thing every five seconds. They are literally hovering over that crater, not moving at all. Finally, they leave. They were hovering, allegedly. I mean, they were, it, if, in order for that to be true, they would have had to be hovering, but you can't hover. You, you're moving, okay, continuously, very, very fast, like in the other uh, or orbits I showed you. They are not orbiting the moon or anything else. They're in a studio filming a wall chart or something of the sort. So to wrap up for now, um, I'll make this very brief. <clears throat> Last uh, time I was here a couple weeks ago, I mentioned to you guys that um, there had been a very uh, fantastic chemtrail display. Okay, there were, chemtra there were chemtrails today too. Did anybody notice the chemtrails today? There were chemtrails today as well. But that, that day, that particular day, it was... Hmm? Meteor? 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 No, 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 these are chemtrails. These are, this is, this is, uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go, I'll, I'll, I'll get to the explanation in a second. But um, two weeks ago, it was a very distinctive display because it was a very crisp, uh, uh, cool day, dry air, um, dark blue sky, and the, the, the chemtrails were thick, massive chemtrails all across the sky, okay? Um, sometimes... Straight up. Yeah, yeah I'll, show you right. I'll show you that in a second. Um, usually, it's not quite that distinctive because uh, the sky's not that blue and the, and the chemtrails aren't quite that thick, but anyway, this one was fantastic. Okay, these chemtrails. Now this is uh, particulates being shot out of, out of uh, planes. Planes are depositing particulates uh, in, in the air, all right? And leaving behind artificial clouds. That's mostly aluminum. Okay, and here are these, the ones that we, you mentioned, um, okay, shooting up right in, across the sky in a fantastic manner and leaving thick plumes of artificial clouds. That's going up, going up over our heads, almost on a daily basis. Okay, there's a big, thick artificial cloud uh, next to the Hancock Center. And this was all on the day when it was physically impossible to be forming uh, normal water vapor jet contrails because the sky was too dry. All right, here we are in Chicago, it's too dry. on that particular day. <clears throat> a government, they can spray us like bugs and deposit countless megatons of toxic chemicals into the atmosphere, altering the atmosphere and the environment <coughs> of the entire planet. What is that? A, a government that can do that can and did fake going to the moon. A government that can kill, murder thousands of Americans on 9-11 in this false flag attack and go off to the Middle East and murder millions more there after invading several countries under completely false pretenses any way you slice it. A government uh, that could do that, a criminal act on uh, mass proportion can and did fake going to the moon. A government that can orchestrate these obscene bullcrap, quote unquote mass shootings, lying through their teeth, okay? Keeping us in fear and divided, divided conquer. Okay, nowadays these <coughs> absurd quote unquote mass shootings are almost a daily, uh, um, you know, a monthly thing. Okay, the government that can do this kind of crap can and did fake going to the moon. They are liars of the highest order. Okay, for them, killing the internet, destroying the internet, okay, calling it progress, that's child's play. For a government like this, giving trillions of our tax dollars to billionaires and calling it tax reform, that's standard operating procedure. Business as usual. With a government like this, there's only one solution, and that is to get rid of it and replace it with an actual democracy. Thank you.
All right. Uh, where's the moderator? Uh, yeah, it looks like you might do it tonight. You take care of the. I'm gonna moderate. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking at these photographs. Okay. I'm familiar with some of the video things in there. How to use green screen. How to do stuff like this. And I also happen to know that the equipment available in the civilian market around 1969 was radically different. You know, photographs versus. Uh, I'll, I'll repeat it. I'll repeat what the You know, photographs versus film, uh, HD technology versus the standard definitions of the day. And I, I, I'm sorry, I'm just having a lot of trouble accepting what you're saying because it's so implausible. Where are the, where are the people who had this? Where are the deathbed statements from the astronauts? If this was such a, a hoax as you say, how come we haven't heard more about it through through uh, other means? Now, I may be wrong. You may know different sources than I do, but I'm having an extreme amount of doubt believing it. I do say your presentation was well-crafted and well done, and, you know, i got to give you that credit, but I'm just having a lot of trouble believing it. Why should I believe this? Okay, Tim says um, that he's familiar with uh, a lot of photographic techniques uh, yes. used uh, in, in the day. Yeah, you can and backlighting, you can do overexposure. Green screen wasn't even around back then. You do the reprojection thing. Okay, and and so you're having trouble describing um, what I'm describing. Okay, uh, now that's very, very good, Tim. Uh, what specifically uh, don't you believe? What, what specifically uh, uh, that I presented here do you doubt or think I'm wrong about? Because I was looking at the internet while you were going through some of this stuff and also have done some of the other things. And, you know, we had a launch of a Saturn V rocket. We could see it go up. There's millions of witnesses. Where did the rocket go besides the moon? Now, I know you said it went around the Earth. There were actual people riding in it. But, you know, there's the signals that came from the moon, for example. Okay, so those, are, those are a lot of, uh, you're saying a lot of things. Uh, a Look, lot of I'm just having trouble believing it. Okay. I haven't researched it okay. deep enough. <laughs> okay, to, to, answer, to start to answer your question, okay. um, those, those other things that you mentioned, they did, uh, the Saturn V rocket did go, okay? okay? So they did, and they did, um, they probably, okay, probably, did orbit the moon, excuse me, the Earth, and then come back down. They didn't go all the way to the moon. Um, the signal uh, issue, um, they can bounce uh, signals off satellites and, and, and make it seem like they're coming from the moon. So there are explanations for a lot of these things. Now, as for you not believing, um, you know, whatever, you have to tell me more specifically. And, and yeah, I, I later on, you can come up with something. I more agree. Specific. I agree. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't want to moderate. Tim, why don't you yeah. please somebody come up here and moderate? I don't want to act like the moderator. All right. Um, Will somebody come up and... All right, good. Get out of way. All right, John. I think we should move around. Different questions. All right, Jonathan. I'll take a female because we had a male ask questions. So we're going to do it twice. This is only half of what the college is. All right, Jonathan. Yes, please. Where did some of your sources come from? Like your evidence sources? Okay, um, there are a, a number of... A uh, few, but uh, a number of good books on um, the um, moon hoax. Uh, one is Bill Casing. Um, I think the title is We Never Went to the Moon, I think. Another is, um, let me see, well, Bart Sabrell uh, did a, a couple of documentaries. That's um, uh, one of the guys in the, in, in the original two quotes that I, 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 I gave him. Uh, David Percy and uh, his partner, I forget her name, uh, they did a thick, uh, good book um, uh, detailing uh, um, a lot of this uh, that I gave you today um, in, in, in more detail. Um, there's another, uh, Wisniewski is, uh, is a more modern, a more recent book, uh, an excellent book um, written, um, I think it, the title of that one is, no, the Percy's title is Dark Moon. Oh. Wisniewski is, okay. is, is a similar title, but that's a, you know, you, you, you could look that up, Wisniewski. And then um, there's, oh, uh, Ralph Rene wrote a very good book. Um, that one was uh, Apollo Moon the America, something like, uh, something about moon, moon NASA, NASA Moon America. I think it's NASA Moon America. Okay, those are a number of, of excellent books, and then there are a whole lot more um, videos. Um, Thank you.
Thank you. Okay. Okay, I have a question. Uh, purple, did you have a question, okay. sir? Yeah. Yeah, is this something uh, under the category of, falls under the category of fake news, perhaps? <laughs> well, what, you know, what, what does anybody mean by fake news? I mean, that, that's, that's a loaded term used by both the, the, the establishment and, 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 and the left, you know, the critics. I mean, He's right. it does, by itself, it doesn't mean anything. And by the way, to answer uh, the lady's question a little further, uh, the previous question, I also um, uh, researched a lot of this independently, um, just scientific research that wasn't, wasn't in, in, in any book that I read, but some of the stuff. Uh, next. Good job. Next. Can I Not necessarily. <laughs> okay, very quick. So two, very, two questions. So first, uh, you remember you, you show a slide where it's like some, um, excuse my English, some machine, some equipment who was photographed, blah, blah, blah. So my question is, uh, don't you think that this is not really fake? Right. And, and no, some who photog was photographer this crater. Crater? Yeah, one picture, it's, it was shown like one uh, equipment which it was uh, photographed of the moon. And my question is, don't you think it's like, it's not fake. And my next question. Well, first of all, to answer, to, I, I can't, I can't answer that question because you, I, you, you're not telling me exactly what you saw. But, okay, fine. Next okay, question. Right. Uh, talk more about restriction area fifty one. Area fifty one. Okay, area fifty one is uh, um, um, inside uh, a, a larger, uh, highly restricted military set of military facilities. Why? Um, they have. That's what they did. Uh, they did the Nevada test. Uh, uh, nuclear. Nuclear. UFO? UFO. Oh, okay. Hold on. That, yeah, that's where they did um, nuclear. A lot of nuclear weapons testing, uh, and a whole lot of other military operations. And um, now, Area 51 um, is. Some people say that there's uh, UFOs coming out of there, or base there, or whatever. I, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, there, there are UFOs independently, even if there's no such thing as uh, Area 51. All right, there are UFOs anyway. But some people do connect UFOs and Area 51. Yeah. Thank you. I like the subject. <laughs> uh, Ted, um, you didn't address the fact about the moon rocks that Thank came back that have been examined mind. many times I by scientists. Uh, and uh, uh, they've been distributed all over the world. And uh, scientists um, have used the most uh, recent techniques, which weren't at all available back in the 60s and 70s. And it all confirms it's all consistent with uh, uh, theories about the moon's origin, which and have contributed to the um, uh, recent theories that the moon formed from debris from a large collision of the Earth with a uh, uh, protoplanet. Uh, uh, called Thea, I believe. I'm not sure about that, but uh, uh, what, what is your explanation for how in the world these moon rocks, which have been, de have been determined by scientists all, the world, all over the world to be consistent with from another body similar to the Earth, but uh, uh, consistent with the idea that the moon formed from a collision, which was not even really um, a big theory at the time in the 60s. Okay, um, first of all, some of the alleged moon rocks uh, were found to be petrified wood. There's, there's this one moon rock that, that was given to the government of the Netherlands by NASA, by the U.S. government, NASA, whatever, and uh, it was found out that it was literally petrified wood. Um, in, the in the 1970s, uh, later 1970s, after Apollo, they, NASA was producing huge quantities of um, moon material, okay? and distributing it to universities. It wasn't uh, being produced to use for any uh, further moon mission because there was none after Apollo. They were using it uh, to uh, give, give to universities. The, um, the universities, uh, whatever material that they received was not moon rocks, it was uh, fake rocks. Okay? Um, they, you, can, you can do all kinds of things in a laboratory. Where do you get that information from? Yeah. What were they doing with that material uh, 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 in, in, the 1970s, in the later 1970s um, if they weren't going to the moon? What were they doing with all that material? Okay, L let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. Um, you, can, you can make up all, all kinds of things. Your evidence, okay, you would have to produce a whole lot better evidence of, of what you said. 
that they, they were actually using, uh, they were studying moon rocks. How do we know that they were actually studying moon rocks? As a matter of fact, let me answer that in a more general, in more, in a more general sense. The analysis of these moon rocks is consistent with the theory I just explained. You can, you can, you can, throw, out, you can throw out any theories. I can, you can throw out any theories and make up anything. Uh, you have to prove, just like in, 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 um, in, in, there's a chain of, of evidence or chain of custody in, in a criminal case, okay, where somebody says this is the bullet that came from that gun by, uh, shot by that criminal, okay, you would have to show that that uh, uh, bullet uh, was, was actually the bullet you're, you're claiming. There's no chain of, of, of custody in these moon rocks. You find some, somebody says, I have a moon rock here. Or how the hell do you know where, that, where the hell that moon rock, alleged moon rock because, came from? All right. Second, 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 hold on a second. Just very, 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 very,
the, the, on the evidence that I just showed you um, proves that we didn't, there were no people on the moon. What I showed you proves that they were, de were dealing with a studio set. What about the lunar modules on the moon? The okay, moon? we'll get to you now, in the they next were, They were session. fakes. Please ask your question. Yes, they are. Back on the moon rocks. Um, first of all, if you find, I'd like to know what the chemical composition is of these alleged moon rocks and, and also the composition of, let's say, a meteorite and also of some uh, possibly well, the uh, Great Crater, for example, I think there is some change in the composition of the soil there. What crater? The, the, the crater in Arizona. Meteor, Meteor yeah. crater? Yeah. Oh, what's the question? You know, what, what is the chemical composition of all these different things? Somebody says this is from the moon, this is from some place, some, some planet that blew up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they, they obviously have, have done a chemical uh, analysis of these. Um, you know, what somebody does in, 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 in a university laboratory, okay, uh, and then claim these are moon rocks and I'm studying moon rocks and, and here's the result. How does anybody know that those alleged rocks uh, were from the moon? Um, Bill Casing, uh, Bill Casing uh, consulted, um, like, the, 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 uh, I forget what his title was, the geolo U.S. geologist, the, like the main guy, you know, uh, in Washington, D.C. He met with him and, and, he, and he asked him, uh, did the moon rocks, uh, alleged moon rocks, come from the moon? The guy laughed. He said, no, it's fake. The, the head geologist of the United States. Did he say, but you know, are they quartz, are they feldspar, mica, iron? Um, uh, oh, okay. As far as, as from what I could tell, okay, because I didn't delve that closely into, because I, for, I mean, it, it, okay. Uh, the the moon rocks uh, are alleged to be very similar to Earth. Now, isn't that a nice coincidence? Because if you have Earth rocks, <laughs> then and 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 you and you put them in the laboratory and zap them with some radiation or, or pressure or whatever, uh, then they're probably going to end up being somewhat like Earth rocks. So you know, isn't that some coincidence? Charlie. Yeah, Ted, I've been looking around in photography for about 50 years, and any day I go to photograph people, I bring out my flash. What's your question? If I'm photographing something. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And it's called fill and flash because the light is never uniform. And you showed me a photo of a guy where his right side, the light is coming from the right, and the right side of the person is bright, and the left side is dark. Well, that happens. I there's no days where that doesn't happen. Right. On the Earth or the Moon or anywhere. Well, it, it doesn't happen. It, it doesn't happens. establish anything. Oh, wait, wait, Charlie. That's a feature of photography. It happens on the Earth that when you photograph somebody uh, with a light source coming from one side. From the right. Okay, and the other side will be darker if it's yes. a shadow. Where right, do you think right, right. That's, wh that's what I said. Um, what that's, that that's what happens on Earth because, um, and, and you can see into the shadow, on the, uh, um, the shadowed side of the, of the subject, because uh, the Earth has an atmosphere that diffuses and, and, and radiates, or rather um, spreads light around. On the, on the moon, what I, what, I, what I showed, right, but what I showed you was that on the moon, you have a different situation because no. it's a different environment. There is no atmosphere on the moon to diffuse and spread that light. So shadows would be uh, very so dark, I'm extremely dark on the moon. The light comes from the right. The right side of the person is bright. The left side is dark. Yeah, but did you hear That's the basic did, thing. Did you hear what, what I just said? Move? Did you hear what? Uh, but it's different on the moon because uh, Why? No, I, I, I explained it because you have no atmosphere to diffuse the light. Next question, John. Yeah, that's right, that's the, yeah. yeah, hi. Um, I guess my, I like the research, but my questions are, you know, um, like similar to 9-11, Luke and some people asked a couple of weeks ago said that the you know, where are the people coming forward, right? That too. And I'm like, is there, are people collecting data, going in and, and investigative reporters asking the hard questions, the embarrassing questions, that, uh, you know, and analyzing why they did it, you know, um, where, where'd the money go? Um, I think there's a lot of speculation. They wanted to, they wanted the money and they wanted to um, look like, make us look better than Russia. Um, but I guess, to me, there's other questions. You know, if this is true, what, 
Is Russia fake theirs too? Um, you know, right? Uh, and I also, I one hopeful thing is, are they faking atom bombs too? Uh, you know, maybe maybe it's all fake, just to kind of intimidate the other one and keep us at war. You know, maybe they don't know how to do a big old atom bomb either. Okay, um, to try to answer your, your, your question, which wasn't very succinct, uh, but um, Brian Sabrell um, did a lot of uh, uh, interviewing of the astronauts. He, he, he interrogated them, and uh, one of them threatened uh, threatened to have him killed by the CIA. Another one <laughs> punched him, literally punched him out. Um, then uh, they, they just deny and they say, well, you know, we went to the moon, you're crazy. Um, so people have been uh, asking me a lot of questions. Uh, as for Russia, um, Wisniewski, one of the authors, uh, looked into the Russian program and there are issues there as well. Um, the first Russian alleged Russian cosmonaut, uh, there's no evidence that he went up um, uh, into orbit. Um, okay. The Russians only got to orbit. They didn't go to the moon. But even that, uh, seemed to, uh, have been, there seemed to be fake there. There seemed to have been people killed, uh, died in, in the Russian moon program. So, uh, although Russia was honest, honest enough to not fake going to the moon, they had issues uh, with their space program uh, as well. Um, let me see what else did you say? Uh, atom bombs. I don't know what all else they think. I, I, this specifically was about the moon program, and I, I think I laid out quite a bit of evidence today. And next time I'll lay out even more fantastic evidence. Okay, uh, on the bakery. It's it's abundant. But why are they doing it? Uh, the main reason uh, would be okay. There are there are a number of possible reasons, uh, probable reasons. One is that uh, the NASA program was a uh, $30 billion, $30, $40 billion program in that day, which today would be hundreds of billions of dollars. So that gives the corporations a, a whole lot of money. Just a, a giveaway to, to the corporations. And since they didn't actually have to go to the moon, uh, they just had some funky million dollar you know, toys that they made, they came out like bandits. Um, the military uh, contractors, such, because they were mostly military contractors that supposedly built those, those, those things. Uh, another. Um, motive would be uh, sheer propaganda to make the United States seem like it's the most uh, advanced, wonderful, wondrous, uh, wondrous uh, you know, nation, the leader of the, United, of, of the world by far. Okay. Um, so there are a number of motives um, to keep, uh, to keep the, the public distracted. This is in the, at the height of the Vietnam War. They're, going, they're over there in Vietnam killing uh, literally millions of uh, Indonesians for uh, no good reason whatsoever. Okay, uh, they have to counterbalance that 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 uh, horrendous uh, crime by something more positive. Here, here's a, a nice uh, you know scientific adventure. Isn't this wonderful? So there are a number of motives. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you had you had said that the head geologist had said basically that the moon ran. The moon rocks did not come from the moon. Yeah, said it was judge. He said it was So I, I'm just, I'm just like more details. Um, what's it, if you could give us his name and his official his job title and what department or agency he's with? I don't, I don't recall, but you, you can, you can, I'm sure you can look it up. Bill Casing, it's in, in one of Bill Casing's. Uh, he didn't make that many um, documentaries. But you can probably uh, search for it. I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have those details. But it was Bill Casing, and uh, he said it in one of the, in one of the um, uh, documentaries that he made. I'm sorry, that's, that's as, as far as I can tell you. But, but definitely, Bill Casing said that. So, Bill, you're saying it's the name, the name of the person said was Bill Casing? Bill, Bill Casing, K-A-Y-S-I-N-G. No, he's, he's the government official. No, he was a documentarian. He's a documentarian. And that's what he said, uh, you know, practically verbatim what I told him. John, somebody moderate. I am not a moderator, okay? I, uh, that's, somebody should be up here moderating like a normal meeting. Yeah, come on, Jonathan. Okay, um, there are three um, scenarios, okay? Uh, there are orbiters, or there are, there's a possibility of orbiters, uh, unmanned orbiters, taking photographs of the moon, okay, number one. 
I know about that. Okay, I believe I believe that because they, they showed us very very realistic photographs. They they were the uh, first to show us the uh, far side of the moon, which you can't see from Earth. Are uh, you going to show us the far side of the moon? So I don't believe that's fake. Um, okay, there, there's a possibility of landers, unmanned landers. Now that um, I'm not so sure about. Uh, I kind of doubt that because to to uh, a lot of them crashed. A lot of the landers crashed. All right. And it's difficult to, to perform a landing and a lift up. That's one of the reasons that uh, the manned Apollo uh, 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 missions are so doubtful, because they did it so perfectly. That that's very difficult. So a lot of those failed. But it's possible that they landed a, a probe down there, uh, picked up some rocks, and came back. Uh, the third uh, possibility um, or scenario of a manned uh, missions to the moon, no. no. Human beings have not left Earth orbit. Okay, if for no other reason than the intense radiation um, uh, in, in space that would kill uh, human beings. Who hasn't asked your question yet? Who's the gentleman? Anybody who hasn't asked a question yet? Rock is ticking. I think it has a question. Oh, she's got you. Okay, Ted, I'm very impressed by the amount of research you did. I'm impressed by Seth, the chair and astronomer, the astronomer, I'm into astronomy too. But we have Captain James Lowell, who was on Apollo 13. Mm -hmm. Everybody's seen that movie, or most people have seen that. He's spoken many times at the Adler Planetarium. Are you saying he's a liar? Yeah, anybody, any, all of these people who claim that uh, 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 yeah, yeah, Apollo went up uh, a are liars. Now, there, there's, there, there, there are a number of ways. I didn't look into Apollo 13 that much because they didn't actually go to the moon, okay? So that's a little bit kind of a lie. Yeah, right. There, there are, there are, there are uh, video clips or, or, yeah, video clips of um, a blue sky uh, outside of the window. Very clear blue sky in the window of Apollo 13, halfway to the moon. The, they were not uh, in, in the middle of space. Uh, in, uh, uh, they were in interstellar space, not interstellar, interplanetary space. They were the orbiting the Earth. Produce the photographs, please. Uh, I will next time. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't have it all here. Does anyone who has a question? Oh, I know. One, one more. One more. I'm sorry, John. John one, very quickly. Uh, also, um, there was supposed to be an explosion uh, on Apollo 13, right? Yeah. And yet, that didn't knock the, 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 the a, a violent, a very bad explosion. And that didn't knock the, 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 uh, the spacecraft completely out of whack. And, and they still made it around the moon, came back. Everything was perfectly done. Uh, and they even did hand calculations to do this extremely precise re-entry re into right. Earth's atmosphere. Right. So you're saying that that's all boring? Yeah, yeah, a whole lot of boring. And, and another reason, and also Apollo 13, Apollo 13 has some very rational explanation. Apollo 11 and 12 were getting very, very boring, okay, because they didn't, uh, unlike the later missions where they claimed to show mountains and this and that and the other, the first two Apollo missions, they played it very safe, it was a, extremely bland, they just uh, uh, landed um, in a featureless environment and, and came back after just a few hours. Um, the second uh, uh, mission, uh, mission of Apollo 12, they uh, knocked out the camera and said, well, we don't have, we don't have uh, film, okay, because it was getting so boring. So um, uh, one explanation for Apollo 13 is, oh, this is not a high drum, okay? Um, this, this, yeah. They went up there, they had an accident, and they triumphantly made it back. Yeah. And in the meantime, that gives them a, an extra year or so to plan the next mission. They probably needed more uh, time to plan a, a more realistic mission for Apollo 14. Yeah. There's, a, there's a big difference jump in, 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 the, in the amount of uh, quote-unquote discovery that they do uh, starting with Apollo 14. So there are a number of reasons for Apollo 13, uh, this drama. Oh, you want to Okay. Two more questions, then we're going to go to rebuttals. You, yeah, and then there, you. There, there were th three astronauts killed on the launching pad when it exploded. Uh, the conspirators say that the American government did that on purpose because they were about, about to tell the truth, quote, quote. Yeah. And uh, they were killed by the American government. Do you believe in that? And the other thing is the American flag that furled on the moon. And you can't do that if there's no wind. But actually, there was a, a wooden uh, piece that was holding the flag up. Do you, do you believe that? Uh, that, uh, that everybody knows about that flag on the moon. They say it was. Uh, okay. So um, the Apollo astronauts killed. Um, this was. Um, I don't know what the number was. Maybe Apollo 7? I don't know. Whatever the number was. It was um, uh, Grissom and uh, a couple other yeah, astronauts. Grissom and Young. Yeah. Uh, they were about to uh, 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 say something uh, negative about the Apollo program. They had. 
uh, Grissom was very critical of the Apollo program. He hung a lemon uh, over the command module um, saying, um, sorry, the capsule, whatever it was, saying this is a piece of crap. He called it a bunch of bolts. He, was, he, he could see that it was being faked, okay? And he was um, speaking out already, and he was threatening to speak out even more. And he himself said, if anybody's killed um, in Apollo, it's going to be me. Okay, so and they also tried to kill him earlier, um, almost drowned him, and, and I'll show you that next time. Um, as for um, so yeah, the, the, the U.S. government killed, uh, finally did kill uh, Gus Grissom, who was the only astronaut who, who spoke out, um, at least strongly, or the only one who spoke out at all, really. Uh, so we silenced him. As far as the, the flag goes. Um, that's one of the things, there are a number of things about the Apollo program that our critics point to. I'm not going to deal with the flag because uh, it's possible that the flag uh, uh, seemed to wave in, in a vacuum, even though it was in a vacuum, okay, because it has a momentum or, or, or you know, uh, whatever the technical terms are, uh, inertia or whatever, okay. So it's, poss it's possibly that a flag will move. But I have seen uh, lengthy video clips of what looks 100% like a waving flag. Not just a little bit of movement, but a waving flag without anybody touching it. So uh, I think it's probable that they were in a windy situation. They were in the desert, okay? Um, but I'm not going to dwell on that myself because there's a lot better evidence than the flag waving. Did it be moving the post? There, there was, there was, uh, that, that would have to be very limited, okay? They moved the post a little bit, okay? In, in, in one or two instances. But other, in other cases, they just set the flag down there and it's waving. They're, they're, they aren't twisting the post. They aren't, they aren't anywhere, they aren't near the flag. It's just waving, like, like in the wind. Gotta get the rebuttal. Okay, my question, are you praising, you know, first, Kasman after Russian, Yuri Gagarin, are, yeah. you, are you praise him? Praising him? Yeah, yes. No, he, uh, <laughs> he probably didn't go up. Huh? He, he probably didn't go up. There was, the, no, there was, uh, there was, um, there were issues with him, I, and I don't recall any detail at the moment, I'd have, but uh, I might cover that a little more next time. It's not fake news, it was good. Okay, everybody <laughs> raise your hands if you want to give a rebuttal. All right. Wait a minute. We have a little bit of 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 a little
BS. BS. Oh. Which many people say stands for bullshit, but at least I don't have a PhD pile and hire a deeper. However, um, I've seen I've seen uh, um, a lot of these uh, uh, theories about uh, the NASA faking the moon landing. I, I think common sense tells you that. Um, they wouldn't have made this much footage to give people like Ted a chance to pick it apart. Um, they could have faked the moon landing um, by using mostly audio and saying that, well, there wasn't enough energy to do that much in the way of video and just doing selected uh, scenes of video. Um, there's a lot, now, there's a lot that it's hard for a person to just, I didn't have time to research this before. Um, uh, to pick apart what, what Ted has picked apart, he's cherry-picked a lot of things um, to, uh, to cast doubt on the NASA reality of going to the moon. Now, uh, common sense tells you they wouldn't have that many missions if they faked it. They wouldn't have that many people involved if they faked it. They would have uh, um, found it very difficult to keep uh, whistleblowers from... Uh, now, we, we, we have very big suspicions about things like the uh, Kennedy assassinations because of the number of witnesses that have been shown to be killed. In some cases, very suspicious circumstances. And I didn't see Ted come up with anyone that was really suspicious of killed, except he's throwing out a grissom here at the, la at the last uh, minute in the questioning. Um, and uh, it's, fairly, uh, it's fairly clear that in any kind of program like that, you're going to have accidents and this was a very stupid accident. They had an oxygen atmosphere, which they actually didn't need to have, and it caused the fire to, um, um, you know, burn up. It, the people died very, ter very horribly, and it, it does seem to have been an accident. Um, I have a problem with the vast number of people. Charlie did bring this up. The vast number of people that would have had to have been sworn to silence. Uh, Ted hasn't gone into what the. A uh, timeline would have been into, into how, I mean, with constant turnover and people coming in and they'd have to be sworn, new, new people coming in and they have to be sworn to secrecy about this. How do you bring that up? I mean, we're planning to fake all of these moon landings and uh, you're coming into a situation where we have to convince you out of nowhere that you're going to go along with this crazy project of trying to fake these things. and. You're going to be involved with that. You're as an engineer or as somebody at, at uh, NASA Mission Control or public relations or as a scientist. And I don't think that they would get all these scientists to sign off that these uh, moon rocks are, however similar to Earth, they are uh, different in certain ways that uh, chemically you analyze. And um, also uh, things like exposure to cosmic rays, which uh, uh, the surface of the moon um, has more cosmic ray uh, damage to the rocks at the surface. And uh, although I didn't examine before I came in here, I didn't have a chance to do any research, like I said, um, that would not be something that you could just fool. Uh, the average scientist with a PhD, you know, pile higher and deeper, but still they would be able to recognize things like that. Um, so um, there's a uh, uh, a lot of things about photography that uh, uh, Ted brought up. Uh, um, I think that uh, um, people that are experts in photography, we could have another session uh, to investigate this. Hopefully everybody would come back. Uh, and uh, uh, furthermore, uh, I'm trying to think of an another okay. uh, point. But, uh, Look on your side, Doug. Uh, basically, uh, um, it's, it's so unlikely that it was fake, but what I'd really like Ted to investigate more with his, with his abilities is the possibility that uh, at the time that we went to the moon, we actually knew considerably more um, due to um, the retrieval of UFOs and the back engineering of them. Okay. Thank you. Next. Next. Hi, um, I'm Ellen Corley. Uh, yeah, I. Thanks. I did learn a lot. Um, I I really wasn't sure where your evidence was going to come from, and uh, I was kind of hoping that you know it was a lot about photography, and I, it it convinced me. Um, but I'm a conspiracy theorist in general, and 
what I'm interested in is kind of seeing the connection between the different conspiracy theories, uh, you know, because I think the issue, uh, it's very frustrating to me, you know, we've got consistent people who are not, you know, kind of anti-conspiracy theory, and it, I think the thing is, like you said, that you, it's like you expect you to be deductively proving, the burden seems to be on the conspiracy theorists to prove you know That's right. this, and um, I think that actually, if you study one of the most basic questions is, what is science? And to me, it should be inductive. It, we need like social science, science. Let's. What they've done is like they changed the STEM com curriculum to being just everything's deductive. I, even when I study logic in school. There, you know, it's like practice, you know, Socrates is a man, you know, therefore, and I think we really have been dumbed down. We, you know, they, the science curriculum, it never had any interest in me. Then I went and studied philosophy of education, the whole question, you know, John Dewey and all these people, what is science? And it, you know, if you ask it in the bigger way, to me, you know, like Darwin, uh, maybe, and, you know, there's some people doubt that, but it, um, you know, you want to be looking things inductively, and that's not something that we're, you know, I think maybe they're starting to train people more in the social science and also forensic history. You know, we all need to be investigators, right? We, I, the critical thing is, I mean, to me, true science is you have the hypothesis, you know, I, I think it's a conspiracy theory, and then you start scratching around, and it's like you get really convinced, you know. Um, with 9-11, you know, but I keep searching and I'm putting the burden back on myself. Uh, but what's the real question is, why are we not investigating this self, um, ourselves? Like, I, we need, you know, democracy as a problem, right, if, if there's no truth, if it really is a big fake from our government. And I keep looking for the way that we could go to the Supreme Court and say, we have the right to the truth. And, Oh. And also, just this whole revisionist history, I, I see the pattern is that they're, you know, it, it gives them power, you know, and they put in their own candidates and they lie like it's a, not a rigged election. But, uh, you know, the science, the pattern in practice is this whole thing is rigged and we need to challenge it in court if we want to save the planet and democracy. Here, here. Okay. Thanks. I have a I'm going to have a hard time believing what Ted is telling me. Because, for example, you know, we all know about the Vietnam War and how the President Johnson had lost faith in it. We all know about the Gulf of Tonkin resolution and how it was uh, faked before Congress. We know this because we have evidence that backs, that backs it up. People have come out, there's been declassified government documents saying so. We have the Pentagon Papers and much other evidence after the fact. We know about a lot of uh, things that happened in World War II after 60 some years because the evidence is finally out. And there has been stuff written about it. It goes on with the History Channel and other sources that you can readily see it. However. I've seen nothing like this happening with the moon conspiracy hoax or even with 9-11. I still believe that, you know, we landed on the moon. I believe that 17 terrorists caused the demolition of two major buildings. And I know that uh, my own self, uh, the more I've been digging into this stuff, as Andy's been telling me to do so, I'm finding more and more the evidence that 9-11 happened. Maybe I am a lunatic. I still believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead to save our sins as a Christian. And I believe that there's credible evidence to back up his claims. There's been a lot of apologists who wrote about it. And the biggest evidence I see about that claim, though, is that the thousands have changed lives that happens when you develop that philosophy. What I think is missing in the 9-11 in the and the uh, moon uh, hoax 
is the simple fact that there have been, you know, with 400,000 plus people involved, surely somebody by now would have either had government documents declassified de declaring this or had some kind of a well-scripted book saying that it happened. I don't see this happening on the 9-11 side. I don't see this happening with the moon landing hoax, uh, the so-called moon landing hoax. When you have something that's true, there's usually documents, there's usually some kind of eyewitness testimony, and after 40 plus years, the evidence presented by Ted is still somewhat spotty. I know he's trying to do his best to, to give us his r reasons why, but I just think they get one thing from here, one thing from here, one thing from here, one thing from here, and, it, and on the surface it does look like a plausible front. But when you dig, you know, the astronauts never made a deathbed statement saying that uh, it was all a hoax. I don't think that somebody who actually claimed who physically landed on the moon would go to his death saying that it was a hoax if he didn't, you know, if, saying that it would be a hoax. I can see that uh, some people do lie about things, but at the very end, they usually recant their testimony. I just have a problem believing this stuff because I don't think 13 people I can believe took down two buildings. What about, Not, what about seven? There are, I haven't really looked into that yet, but there will be, no, okay. Number seven, you're talking about the one that crashed at five o'clock? Yeah, the one they took Look down. on the other side of the building with the photographs. You'll see extensive damage. I've just started looking into it. Just come back to us after you've done some more research. That's correct. <laughs> I do know oh. I believe in authority of nuclear power reactors because I've done the research. And I can justify my facts and Don't everything else. Don't research thermite. Oh. <laughs> All right. Secret of it wouldn't be thermite because I talked to the physicist at the Thorium Energy Alliance okay. Conference. He said it would be something else. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Ted, for a great presentation. Um, our government is one of four things. They're either highly incompetent, highly ignorant, criminally violent, or all three, a combination. Now, why do I say that? We have a $440 billion deficit. There are billionaires and millionaires in this country that will go to any length and spare no expense to have their picture taken on an island or a mountain or some uh, uh, un unbelievably uh, ancient, beautiful architecture secluded somewhere on earth and, and, and pay for it. Uh, if our government in the Lyndon Johnson administration, Richard Nixon administration, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan and Mr. Former Head of the CIA, Daddy Bush, are so interested in deficits, then why didn't they generate revenue in this country to have space tourism for those people who can pay for it? So that's my question I ask them. I don't come to any conclusion whether we did go or we didn't go. That's why I came tonight, to learn more about the dialogue. It's been a great, great talk this evening. Uh, you know, if they did go, why did they commit all those crimes assassinating human rights activists and civil rights leaders and trade unionists and feminists and environmentalists all across the world when they had this wonderful example of what a government should do at its best when it lets the public rule and say, we're really smart, we the people. Let our scientists, who are outstanding, the men and women of NASA, use this as our bridge to the next century, to the 21st century, to say we've evolved. We're a peaceful, enlightened, justice-serving civilization. <laughs> so, I mean, they really shot themselves in the foot, which governments do a lot. They're really dumb when they have something that they should put forward as we're a great government, and then do all these criminally insane things to not promote themselves as being of the people, by the people, for the people. So I have a lot of questions for people in government during those uh, 30 years, uh, 33 or 4, 34 year span from 1968 uh, to 1993 approximately. Um, let me just uh, 
read or paraphrase this quote by uh, Carl Rove. You're in my favor. <laughs> Carl Rove, once in a conversation with one of his staff members, uh, said, uh, you know, with one of his, uh, in conversation, you know, some people are in a reality-based community uh, who believe that solutions emerge out of judicious study of discernible reality, you know, enlightenment principles, empiricism, I'm paraphrasing. And this was Carl Rove, one of the insiders of the ruling class's response that he does not deny to this day saying word for word. That's not the way the world really works anymore. We are an empire now. Red flag right there, we the people of the United States, we the people of planet Earth. Empire now? Whoa, that doesn't sound like everybody, we're all in this together, to me. We create our own reality. Red flag number two. That doesn't sound like we care about all the children in struggling working class communities to have the same education as all of us rich folk in white communities where both our parents had good jobs to meet. While people are studying that reality, judiciously as you will, we, the ruling class he's talking about, will act again, creating other new realities. Red flag number three which you can study too, and that's how things will sort out. Sort out? Sort out? <coughs> Doesn't sound like common welfare and, uh, you know, to improve our system of justice to me. We are history's actors, and we will be left to just study, you will be left to just study what we do. So I don't come to a conclusion on this, but I certainly am on the side, so far leaning from what I've heard tonight on the one that Ted presents. Um, I'm here uh, as a rebuttal to the comments about uh, Gus Grisham. Um, the, uh, as some of you may know, the idea of getting the moon was an exceedingly complex engineering puzzle that people needed to solve. Uh, the Earth is moving through space. The moon is moving through space around the Earth. You have limited amount of energy to keep the weight down and you get everybody back alive. Very tough. And the people that they recruited to drive these machines were not just some guys that they threw in a metal box. These were guys at the apogee of um, a skill level of flying uh, aeronautical aircraft. Craft. It was these were the best of the best in the world flying uh, aircraft for the, the the country that was the best in the world at making them. Uh, all these uh, astronauts were very, very advanced test pilots. Um, the, the idea that any of them would, could be talked into lying about all this is just kind of offensive to me. Um, specifically about Gus Grisham, um, when he died in uh, Apollo 1, that was Apollo 1, that was the first of many, many tests on trying to figure out how to get this thing up in the air and in steps, get out of the atmosphere, test the different vehicles, uh, fly around the moon, and then finally land on the moon. This was the very first Apollo mission. Uh, he died because there was a fire. There was just a spark. It was an oxygen-rich environment. And they made some mistakes. They, uh, uh, the hatch, there was no escape hatch. It was bolted on. And um, and they literally, the text just watched them roast alive. It was terrible. So um, it was just an accident. It was an engineering accident. Uh, there is just no conspiracy. The idea, the, in, the insinuation that he was killed on Apollo 1 to cover up for lies that didn't happen until like Apollo, I apologize, when was the moon landing? Apollo 11. 11. <coughs> that was the first time. So that's, it's kind of like putting the cart before the horse. Uh, but also, he was involved in an accident um, where uh, he did almost drown. Uh, this was much earlier. His craft landed, he uh, was one of the first Mercury uh, astronauts. And his, uh, his craft uh, landed, and it was watertight. So he just waits for the helicopter. The frogmen jump down. <coughs> They, the plan was to put a flotation cuff around the aircraft to keep it floating. Then he pops the hatch and he jumps out. The, the hatch blew early before they had the, the cuff around the aircraft. 
the capsule's filling with water, he jumps out into the water and he doesn't have his life preserver on and he's, he's like going under and he's trying to wave for help and uh, the guys in the air, the helicopter just thought he was waving like he's okay. So he did almost drown, but it was an accident. And uh, it was kind of embarrassing because people kept saying, why did you blow the hatch early? And he's like, I didn't touch the switch. And it's just kind of a funny uh, end note to that story. Technology advanced with undersea exploration. They recovered the capsule. And they pulled it up. And, uh, and they found that the switch hadn't been touched. So there was vindication for Gus Grisham decades later, but uh, he, he didn't touch that switch. It just blew by itself, which was the story he claimed all along, um, much to his embarrassment. So uh, just wanted to pass those on. Oh, you know, I'm sorry, I wanted to add one more thing. Near Kokomo, Indiana, there's an Air Force base called uh, Grisham Air Force Base. And for anybody who's an aviation buff, they really have a wonderful collection of World War II airplanes down there. So if you're in that neck of the woods, thanks. here with uh, such great information. This is actually my first time hearing about the landing of the moon hoax. But before I came here this Saturday, um, I tried really hard to Google some uh, articles maybe and some sources. Um, if next time if you could bring some more sources, that would be great because maybe Oops. it's because I'm using the Google search engine. I couldn't find any uh, articles or anything. But um, I am a heavy conspiracy theory theorist, and I do believe in some conspiracies, but I do like to tap into my own resource, uh, research as well. And also, since we didn't go to the moon, and we approximately spent billions of dollars on Apollo 11, um, where did the money go? Where did, what was, where did the funds go to? Um, I always think about that as well. With any, where's the money? Um, also, uh, also want to touch bases on the fact that there are some other conspiracy theorists that do believe that humans did go to the moon, but they were as like a top secret uh, NASA experiment sort of kind of, where they were sent to the moon as like live guinea pigs. Um, trying to tap into that and see where it lines up with your conspiracy theory as well. So um, I'm very open to more information on this theory. Um, and if you can come talk to me afterwards, I can grab some more sources from you. No career politicians. Uh, the president should be in there for six six years, one term, and that's it. The senators for six years, one term, and out they go. Same thing with the, uh, the congressman. It's like a president, he spends the next two years. His first two years, okay. Next two years, he's he's campaigning. Six years, and out they go. And I, I doubt if you ever you'll ever get money out of uh, politics. Either. No. I got um, today. Uh, well, uh, uh, January twenty second is uh, the forty fifth anniversary of Roe versus Wade. There's about fifty nine million abortions in America uh, in the last forty five years. And uh, I got this here through a mail several months ago. Uh, enough is enough about the shooting. It's from Michael Madigan. Enough is enough. So far, Madigan, uh, Emmanuel, and uh, Trump. 
they have not stopped uh, the, the shooting here. There is enough is enough, but it's still not here. And it just it struck me now, uh, Obama, <clears throat> he's building this library, museum and parking lot, and I think Obama should go out over there in Englewood and speak to the uh, people over there, black people over there. The, enough is enough. Now, if you, you had a telephone over to <clears throat> the telephone to where these, uh, the black uh, 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 fellows on the radio, uh, I don't know their numbers, uh, their telephone numbers, call in over there and tell them on, on the air that Obama should go to Englewood, that enough is enough. That's, that's about it. Right. And uh, if uh, Obama went over there to Englewood, <laughs> All right, let's thank our speaker. Let's thank our speaker for a nice presentation. Thanks to our moderator and uh, Tim for helping out here. Uh, let's see, I'll be eclectic as usual here. You know, I, I still remember I was in college. Uh, when the moon landing took place. And I still remember this, for some reason, I was trying to read Sartre's strange book, Being in Nothingness. I had to read this for college. And I was so absorbed with this crazy book, trying to figure it out. I, I had no idea we were going to the moon. But my girlfriend pointed it out. You know, and then I saw it on TV, and I said, oh, this is incredible. But I was skeptical right there, as soon as I saw it on TV. I go, this, this, this doesn't, there's something is amiss in the state of Denmark here. Uh, let's see, I'll jump around. I don't know why you could per perceive there would be different rocks from the moon than rocks, you know, you find on Earth. Like, it's not another that? universe. And there's not, like, different minerals uh, on the moon. They, matter of fact, I think you could go to your backyard and find some rocks. And I used to love going to the museum <laughs> to watch people looking at these moon rocks on display, you know, yeah. like they're the Hope Diamond or something. You know, <laughs> this is just stupid basalt. You, know, you can find anywhere. <laughs> it's like, like it, it dirt. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, this is a nice study of photography, and the first thing you do, I still remember having these Kodak books, first thing you learn is photographing light comes from one side. When you photograph the person, the light's never uniform, unless I guess you, all your photographs are precisely at noon or something. No, that's the first thing you learn in photography. I still remember those Kodak books I had, and the other thing is horizon. Where do you put the horizon in your photo? You can, that's called composition. And you can do all kinds of things with that. I don't know if you really establish anything like that from that perspective there. Uh, regarding, um, let's see, where else here? The Van Allen belt, you didn't talk too much about that. But this was talked about at the college here in the years since. Uh, if you travel about a thousand kilometers, outside of the earth, there's a circle there, and human, it's fatal to human beings, the energy there. Uh, if you try to pass through it, you will die. It's fatal. Uh, and it's a, it's a barrier that, that's why the Russians had unmanned craft going to the moon at this concurrent to the Americans here. Uh, the other thing is, you know, somebody mentioned thermite there. Oh, you did. Yeah, we were talking about minerals. Uh, this is amazing. They said, oh, they were, they were, the buildings were, were exploded or somehow using thermite. And I said, what's that? Started looking into it. And this is like some secret substance made only one place at the, in White Sands military. The military is the only one that can manufacture this secret substance, you know. I actually called my, my colleague in White Sands, who I know, and I go, are you guys making the secret stuff that was used in 9-11? And 
And she said, what are you, what are you drinking, Charlie? <laughs> what are you talking I said, I worry you. You guys are making thermite out there, you know? You know, <laughs> it's the only place it can be made. The government knows it. And, uh, let's see, uh, by the way, the Van Allen, yeah, a little bit of aluminum in a spacecraft. By the way, there were many, many, I actually had a debate on this at one time. Uh, there were many, many, many accidents in the space program, um, uh, tragically. Uh, so I don't know why you could focus on one and draw anything from it. Uh, if anything, it, it would indicate that they weren't having any success in it. Last thing, though. I still was skeptical many years later. I happened to be in Florida on business, and I took time out a day out. It cost me a few bucks. But I went to the Space Center there in Florida and looked at the Saturn V record, and I will attest to the fact that that thing on display wouldn't get you to the moon. It's, it's, it's more like a parade float thing made out of chicken wire. And, uh, you know, I looked at it. I even inquired. I said, is this, is this, is this the Saturn V? The guy looked at me and goes, well, of course, sir, what do you think? You know, this is our, you know, I go, there's no technology here. There's nothing. You know, but anyhow, that's part of the thing. We'll look forward to part two, you know. All right, thank you very much. All right. Well, I need to get the last word. Yeah, you all. I want the truth. I could see you in my government office, you know. I demand the truth. Oh, well, the guy. All right, thank you. All right. Let me address a few. Order, please. We got one last speaker. Oh, all right. Ted. Address a few of your points. My throat always gets in trouble, sorry. Okay, uh, somebody mentioned uh, that I cherry picked the apples. Huh? That was somebody, me. Uh, no, yeah. I do. Okay, well, um, I thought of somebody else too, but anyway. <coughs> now, uh, somebody said I cherry picked the evidence. Okay, you only have to whenever you're uh, looking into a crime or a conspiracy or something that doesn't look right, uh, some fakery, hoax, whatever. You only need one solid piece of evidence. All right. If something impossible happens uh, that they claim happened, it's a hoax. All right. Um, Something uh, very simple, um, one of the, I think, strongest pieces of evidence I, I told you about right here, right now. Um, you cannot have uneven lighting on the moon surface. They were not on the moon, period. How do you explain uh, an uneven lighting with a, a very obviously dark background and a, and a spotlight situation? They a spotlight. Only, a spotlight. That's what they it was. They a spotlight. It was that yeah. sim it's that simple, all right? They, so he, and I and that was only one of many pieces of evidence that I brought up. All right, you mean well, how much evidence exactly do you want me to bring in? All right, I brought in let's say 10, uh, 12 pieces of evidence today. Next time I'm going to bring in another dozen, uh, ten, whatever. I don't know. I have a comment. You want me to bring in a thousand? Is that going to satisfy you? See a moon rock. How about two thousand? How many pieces of evidence does it take? <laughs> right? You don't need check out that the much evidence. Yeah, okay, fine. I'll check out MythBuster. Um, I'm an astronaut. Now, somebody else said that um, uh, you know there are so many people involved. Okay, that uh, why didn't they all come out and, and spill the beans? All right. A lot of those people were undoubtedly on a need-to-know basis, just like uh, all these other giant uh, hoaxes. All right. Also, um, things don't come out, and by that I mean uh, not all of them would have known that it was a uh, hoax. Uh, they were doing their own little thing. The guy that, 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 that uh, put the, one of the landing legs on the, on, the, on the LM, he didn't know that the uh, lunar module wasn't actually going to the moon. He didn't know that the big, the, he didn't have the big picture. Um, so, yeah. whatever, okay. Mm -hmm. Let me get, move on to something else. Um, somebody said that we need to investigate um, ourselves. Uh, help Ellen did. And, and that's certainly true. We can't uh, sit here and depend on, on some scientist and some uh, university, some you know, uh, fancy university coming out and telling us all about 9-11 uh, or, or, or uh, moon hoax or, 
or some uh, police chief uh, explaining how the, the, the mass shootings are all a bunch of bull crap, okay? We have to th have some common sense. The authorities are not going to come and inform the, our, us serfs that, that they're, you know, uh, carrying on all this, uh, um, you know, uh, yeah, all, the, all these crimes and, and, and bullshitting, okay? They, 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 we have to depend on ourselves. And we ha can do that with common sense and, and a scientific method, which I, I think uh, I'm pretty rigorous about. Uh, you might disagree with uh, what, I, the way, what I say sometimes, but I think that I, I'm explaining things pretty scientifically. Tim uh, mentioned um, that uh, he believes Jesus rose from the dead. He's a Christian. Now, this is very interesting, okay? And, and what I'm going to say, it's going to sound very strange to No, no, that's fine, because I'm, I'm interested in listening. Um, I have read the Bible. I've read the Quran as well. Uh, okay. But from the beginning to end. So have I. And, and I believe that there was an alien presence in, 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 in those ancient times, an advanced beings that carried on, in a sense, a, a hoax, a, lo a very large hoax, and that's what started Christianity. There were, uh, they were not gods. There was not a god or gods. They were aliens acting as gods, uh, messing with uh, 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 the people at that time. And that's why Christianity and, and, and the Muslim faith as well, Islam, are so strong. Because they are based in fact. Except that the, that the people were, were fooled into thinking that they were dealing with gods, when actually they were dealing with megalomaniac, lunatic aliens. All right? uh, aliens so, from where? From outer space or somewhere else, some, or some other dimension of wherever, but they weren't ordinary human beings. Okay, so 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 a lot of these. Uh, so I think that we are uh, even now dealing with not necessarily aliens, okay, but uh, advanced human beings, very intelligent uh, hoax perpetrators who are uh, um, making up uh, this reality that Carl Rove talked about for us. Okay, this fake reality, and they have enormous resources. They're extremely intelligent. Okay, uh, they know what they're doing. Um, they use the methods of propaganda. They use. Uh, they they have the resources of, of, of all kinds of uh, quote unquote experts to draw on. All right, we cannot underestimate what these people are capable of. Um, so, in the same way that uh, religion, I think, was based in fact but misinterpreted by humans who couldn't have known or, or didn't know that they were dealing with a, 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 some, something of a master race, we're kind of in the, in the same situation now, except that we should be intelligent enough and advanced enough to recognize the situation that we're in. Okay? We moved a little bit uh, further uh, 2,000 years uh, uh, from that time. Um, somebody mentioned that, um, you know, I think somebody said something to the effect that nobody's been killed or, or uh, Okay, Thomas Barron was a NASA inspector. Him and his wife and children were killed on railroad tracks in, in, in Florida. He came out with a report uh, showing uh, a lot of the, how, how this, this business, Apollo business, was not right by uh, a long shot in many ways, okay? He was, in, in effect, spilling the beans. They killed him. Um, just before he was going to uh, uh, testify, uh, they killed him, uh, they, and his report, uh, a, a several hundred page report or whatever, uh, mysteriously disappeared. All right? um, there was an astronaut that was, uh, I forget which one, one of the uh, Apollo astronauts, he was going to meet with Bill Casing, one of the primary investigators, and, um, and he, was, he seemed to be you know, coming out. All right? Bill Casing thought he, that he had something very important to tell him. He was killed just before the meeting, similar to uh, uh, Kennedy uh, witnesses being killed just before they're about to testify. So um, there's a lot of, of uh, very uh, funny business, to say the least, going on with uh, this case, just like other cases. Um, somebody mentioned that uh, he couldn't believe, um, gentlemen, I, I'm not sure he's still here. Yeah. <laughs> he, couldn't, he couldn't believe that um, these uh, ace pi uh, pilots, uh, would, these professionals, would lie about what they were doing. Okay? These pilots, okay, these, these professionals were soldiers first. They were military men. They, were follow they are order followers. Okay? Um, they saw what Grissom uh, went through. And I'm going to explain it, it, it uh, a lot more next time. I didn't get to Grissom. I'll get to him next time. All right? and, and your explanation is, is, is fuzzy uh, and, and not quite right at, at best. Okay? Um, he was a kill. It was not just an accident. Yes. That, that uh, fire on the launch pad was not just an accident. It was murder, and it can be demonstrated that it was essentially murder. He uh, wasn't just uh, by chance drowning um, out there in, in, in the ocean. He was, that was set up, and that can be shown um, to a large degree. 
So it's not, it's not as innocent as, as, as you portrayed. Um, somebody asked, where did all the money go? Okay. Where did all the money go? Uh, the day before 9-11, Ro Donald Rumsfeld comes out and says, oh, sorry folks, we're missing, how many trillion did he say? 2.4. 2.4 trillion dollars. We don't know where it went. All right. These people have money to burn. They couldn't they couldn't get rid of all their money if they spent a million dollars a day. All right, who knows where this money goes? They, they have—they literally have black budgets that we don't know what's in them. We don't we probably don't even know that they exist. All right, they people have money coming out of their ears. So where did the money go? Who knows where the money went? All right, they have money. That, that's for sure. They have the resources to do what uh, the conspiracy investigators have talked about. Uh, next time I'm going to talk a lot more about uh, the Van Allen belts and, and beyond. There's, it's not just the radiation from Van Allen belts. It's radiation, cosmic radiation, and, and most importantly, solar uh, uh, particle radiation. All right, that would prevent anybody from going um, on these journeys past uh, Earth orbit. I'm going to talk a lot more about that next time. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. There's a famous scene, The Wizard of Oz, the aha moment when the people learn the truth, where they say, "Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain." So on behalf for this evening, we like to thank you for reminding us to pay attention to where the big curtains are and who's behind them. So we present you with this uh, Cosmos curtain. Thank you very much for your presentation. And we will close now with a brief quote on what happens when conspiracy theories are right. I think you may all know this because I did use this later, but here we go. <laughs> In all of my years of public life, I have never profited, never profited from public service. I've earned every cent. And in all of my years of public life, I have never obstructed justice. And I think, too, that I can say that in my years of public life, that I welcome this kind of examination because people have got to know whether or not their president is corrupt. Well, I'm not a corrupt. I earn everything I've got. There you go. The college of complexes stands under. That was very good. I did see Capricorn one. I didn't see it. I mean, yeah, truth yeah, is stranger than fiction. It really is. It is a good movie. That's it's not amazing. a great movie. I had good with that. That's kind of interested in it. It did kind of, you know, I still don't know what it is. I hope you didn't mind that being a turn that around for a good thing. Yeah, it's kind of a what if. Thanks for the presentation. I'm suggesting that it was actually. Jonathan was real. It's a what if kind of science fiction kind of film. It's the idea that it was all on a sound stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's, that's the idea. That's yeah, that they and that they yeah, videoed yeah. it.